Hi there folks, I'm Kevin Duell here for TotalFisherman.com and if you want to see how to catch worms like this, then stay tuned. Thank you for joining us today. We all love fishing with worms. Why? Because they work. Every freshwater fish in North America loves to eat worms. They're easy to get, they're inexpensive, and they hands down produce. So today I'm going to show you how to build the ultimate electric worm getter. If that's not high tech fishing, I don't know what is. Sit back and watch how it's done. Okay, let's get started. The first step is to cut the length of PVC pipe. This is 3 quarter inch schedule 40 PVC. We're going to do 6 inches. Come in and you can mark it if you want or you can just start cutting. Mark it. Take a hacksaw and cut that off there. The next step after you get this cut off to about six inches is we're going to come in about an inch and a half down and we're going to make a hole in it. You're only going to drill halfway through it, meaning the hole is just going to be on one side. Quarter inch uh, drill bit works great for, for this hole. Keep in mind this is going to be the very last probe at the end of the series. This is going to be number six. Okay, the next step is you're going to come in here with your quarter inch drill bit and you're going to drill a hole right in the middle of this three quarter inch PVC cap. Quarter inch hole should be right in the middle, that looks about right. Okay, our next step is we have our quarter inch metal rod that's going to be the probe that goes down into the ground. I'm going to measure and mark this at one foot and then we're going to cut it off with our hacksaw. Definitely want this clamped in a vise because this rod being round tends to roll quite a bit. Okay, we've got our quarter inch metal rod cut off and as you can see it's got a, a burr there on top. So you want to take a file and go ahead and touch that up. Taking that burr off Remember, file only cuts when you move it away from you. Go ahead and just gently round the top of this off, taking off any unevenness. And then it'll be ready for the next step. Okay, the next step is we're going to come in and we're going to mark the rod for the threads that we're going to put on it. Mark it there at three inches. Okay, so three inches of the rod is going to be threaded. Now, if you've never used a die before. Go slow. You can definitely mess this up and then you have to start all over again. Cut a new rod. Go ahead and get a little bit of cutting oil on there. Okay, This definitely helps the process. That's a little bit more than a little but better to have too much than not enough. All right. Get this on there the right way. There's a more open end and a closed end. Slide that on there and just slowly start to turn it around trying to keep it even. You can feel it start to bite in. You don't want this to be crooked. Okay, the next step after we have the rod threaded is we're going to go ahead and start assembly. I want to take a standard quarter 20 nut and thread it on here. Get it all the way down and get it tightened right, get it tightened right up. 
about as tight as you can get it. Don't strip it out, but get it on there really tight. And then the next step is we're going to take our cap and we're going to put it on. Go ahead and thread that on there like so. All right. Now that you got that on, you can take it out of the vise. Okay, for the next step, we're going to be using a one and a half inch tension pin. This can be all these parts can be found at your local hardware store. This is just uh, being used as a spacer so that we get the work area up out of this constricted area and the end of this end cap. Slide that down over the top of that. Any tubular piece of metal would work. And then take a standard quarter twenty nut and thread it down on top of there. Like so. And then we're going to put it back in the vise and tighten this up. Get that nice and snug. Alrighty, the next step is we're going to put our wiring terminal on there. This is a number 12 to 10 gauge insulated terminal. And we go ahead and Thread that on like so. We're going to attach the wire here later. And then take, I call them a nylock nut because it has a little piece of plastic inside that keeps it from sliding back down. Some people call it a lock nut. Go ahead and put that on. Okay, the next step is Remember, this is going to be the last one in the series of probes. So we're taking our 10 gauge wire that's connecting all of our probes together. And this is going to be connected down into this one. Go ahead and do yourself a favor and thread this down through the pipe before you get started. Go ahead and get that down in there, like so. And then go ahead and strip off the end of this, finding the 10 gauge mark on your wire strippers. Strip that off. Go ahead and bend that up a little bit. Stick it down in there. Get a little bit of copper showing. Go ahead and crimp that down nice and tight. Okay, at this point, you can go ahead and bend carefully and slowly, bend your connector up that way. And you can slide your pipe down over the top of your connection. This is just to make sure that your tolerances are good and that you can get the pipe down over there. Be careful about jamming it in too far because you still need to glue this in place. If you get it down in there, you might have a heck of a time getting it up. So that's starting to look like a worm getter. Okay, for this next step, we want to drill our hole. We want to go all the way through. We need to allow the wire to go all the way through this. Okay. All right, we're going to be adding one of the probes. So, you know, the worm catching ability of these is about two feet from the center in a circle, you know, radius out from each of these probes. I don't like to push it that far. I come in about 20 inches and I made a mark on this. So each of these probes will be about 20 inches apart. And remember, we put a hole in both sides of each of these handles. We're going to go ahead and thread this on. This 10 gauge wire is a little hard to work with, so you want to you want to take your time. Go ahead and stick it in through there, and then just go ahead and work it through like so, and get it all the way down to that mark that you made. Okay, so you've got this threaded on down to that mark, and you're going to go ahead and from the top down stick it in and get it to come out this other hole 
might have to bend it a little bit to get it to come out. Okay, and the same thing, kind of work with it and pull all that down through there. Okay, so this is what it should look like. You have the wire ran in through both sides of it, and it continues up in a loop like this. Guys, there's other ways of doing this, but the main reason for keeping this 10 gauge wire contiguous all the way through the setup is so that if you have any problems in here, it doesn't affect the transmission of the electricity down through the whole, the whole system. You don't want this to be like the Christmas lights when we were all kids where one Christmas light goes out and next thing you know all the rest of them in the chain are, are out. This way if you have any problems in here and you have one probe that's not working all the other probes will still work because they're attached to this this one main bus, this one main conduit of electricity. Okay so. for this next step we're using what Napa Auto Parts calls a splice lock connector. I call it a vampire tap. This yellow one is for 10 gauge and 12 gauge wire. Okay. If you've never seen these before, they're pretty cool. It allows you to tap into an existing wire and be able to have a feed off of that into another wire. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do one of these outside of our setup so that you can see how these work just in case you've never used one before. Okay, so imagine this is our main conducting electrical wire that goes to the socket for this setup. This would be our 10 gauge wire. Okay take this vampire tap and in this first side of it over here you snap that on to to the wire okay you can slide up and down like so and then this is going to be what you're using to tap into it okay and that goes on this side over here okay just like so all right you take a heavy pair of pliers and you come in making sure that the lead, this lead, is all the way up in there. This is not the time for that to be coming out. And go ahead and smash that all the way down, like so. Okay, and what that does is that jams that piece of metal that you saw sticking up that you smashed down and it cuts into both of these wires and it completes the electrical circuit inside of there. Now you still have electricity here because this has never been broken but now you have electricity here because it was able to tap into the main wire. And then you just snap that over and it covers that up like so. Alright so you've got your handle with your main wire ran all the way through it. We're going to go ahead and take our probe and we're going to stick it down through the center of our handle. Okay, slide it on there firmly, but not so firmly that you can't get it back off here in a little while. Alright, so this is coming out the top like so. Take your vampire tap, slide it on all the way over. Okay, and then snap that in to the main part like so okay and then taking your heavy pliers go ahead and smash that all the way down alright and then we take that little cover this 10 gauge is a little hard to work with because it's so stiff Get that over and get that little cover over and snap down like so. Then go ahead and take your electrical pliers and just cut off this tag end here. Okay, and now what we need to do is work with this a little bit on these. These little covers, sometimes you have to get in here and pry at them a little bit to get it to come over. Don't break this off. 
pry it a little bit, get it down there so that it snaps all the way down and on. Sometimes you might have to use your pliers a little bit, give you a little extra leverage. All right, got it on there. Okay, and the next step is we need to get need to get these wires down inside here. Okay, work with them. Now this is three quarter inch conduit. If I had used one inch, it'd probably be a lot easier. But I like the look of the three quarter inch. So you might have to pull on these a little bit, and then slide it. Pull a little here, pull a little here. Slide it some more. See how it's starting to it's starting to get down in there. Okay. All right. Push comes to shove. Gently, just pop on it a little bit like that. All right. Once you've got it all down in there, and you can get the cap on, you know, like so, you know, you're good to go. And that's what it should look like. Okay. Remember we haven't glued these down yet. That's going to be our last step. Okay, the next to the last step is we need to make up this connection here. So one of the things you bought down at the hardware store was one of these plugs that you can put on the end of a wire. You go ahead and make up your connection inside here. This just screws off as you can see. And keep in mind it's this side on most sockets that you need to hook onto. Okay, so when it plugs in, it's it's the spade on the right. Some people probably say, "Well, don't you need both of them? Don't you don't you need the other wire over here?" Well, no. This wire over here is the ground, and remember, you're finding ground obviously because you're sticking these in the ground, so it completes the circuit. So you have positive letting electricity into the ground, and you just need this side of it. A lot of people will just call that a draw. It's drawing through the probes right into the ground. That's what makes the worms come up. So I'm going to wire this up. Alrighty, the next step is going to be gluing on the uh, caps onto the conduit. But before I do that, I took and tested all of my connections uh, after plugging it into the outlet with a voltmeter. And each one of them read 120 volts. So if you don't know how to use one of these, uh, there's instructions on the internet. They're pretty straightforward. Just uh, optional step make sure that all your wiring is is good to go so this is an optional step you know one, one way to do it is you could just jam all those caps on there and they hold on pretty tight or to do it the right way you could take some of this PVC cement and shake it up a little bit be careful not to get this on everything job that off like so okay I'm already getting it on everything and then just come in here and making sure that this pipe is relatively clean. Put that on there like that. Okay, all the way around. And then just firmly slide your cap all the way on. Kind of acts as a lubricant as well and allows it to get nicely all the way up on there. Okay, same thing for the other side. Take your cap and jam it on there. Let that dry for quite a while and you'll be all set. Let's go see how this thing works. Nothing in the bucket.
Hey there guys. Not too bad a haul. Got quite a few in here if you can see that. I don't know how many dozen that is, but that would cost you quite a bit at the tackle store. All different sizes and in good shape. Ready to go fishing.